This week on Chicago Beer Pass, we've got a full studio with the Bader Brow crew coming in. So get ready for that. Cause you know, you got a cork locked out, boop, the other flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, I, how's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw! Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Hey, Brad, I'm Nick Wayne. And we've got a full house this week. If you're not seeing the video, there's a lot of people in this room. Dude, this is the most guests I think we've had all the time. <laughs> you know, it is a uh, return of the Bader Brow crew. Now, we've got a couple guys we've had on the show before. Uh, Justin Maynard, what's going on? What's up, bud? And uh, Ross Sam, founder of Bader Brow. Hey, man. Hey, man. And can you introduce the two guys that you brought with you this time? So I brought with me my uh, new restaurant partner, Rocky Gupta. Rocky owns uh, Chef Luciano's, which is right down the street from us. And he uh, came on board to help us get our own restaurant open. We also have Chef Frank Kwiatkowski with us, who uh, has helped develop our menu at Bader Brow. Right on. Right on. Very cool. So, And then we have a lot of beer with us, too, right? You guys... I think your whole lineup. We brought not the whole lineup. lineup. No, we didn't actually bring any of our, <laughs> our, our uh, lot of year round. Yeah, yeah. 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 we brought so all seen. all one offs. So we brought our um, unfiltered hoppy IPL uh, called Blizza, mm -hmm. um, and we brought our new Berliner Weiss, which has just come out, just hit the docks. Uh, we brought our summer IPL Lawnmower Lager, and then we brought two box. Uh, one is our smoked Doppelbach called the Conflagrator, and the other one is our uh, spring Maybach called Hip Hop Beatbach. Right on, right on. Now, Brad, have you been down to the new Beta Bro? Uh, once over last summer, uh, it was in the middle of the week, so before this kit, before the kitchen was open, and I was just shocked at how big it was. Like, <laughs> space. I'm thinking like twenty thousand square feet or something. It's, right? it's actually it's twenty five thousand over the course of the two floors. It's got about an eighteen thousand square foot footprint. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man, but Nick, you were just there recently, right? I was just there. Um, the uh, the team drink and smoke came in fourth place. In the uh, Tuesday night trivia, okay, you know, um, yeah, and then I got a chance to check out the new menu. I was really excited about that, so I'm really glad these guys are here, man. Um, what is the connection, man, between you and the chef? Now I've heard of this space before. Uh, was it Luciano's? It's like my mom's here, a place where she worked downtown, right? She'd always go there. Yeah. Um, what's the connection? Talk about how you guys met, and, and what's the connection? Well, he's a neighbor, basically. Oh. He's uh, two blocks north of us on uh, Cermak and Wabash, and uh, you know, when we were in construction, we sort of discovered the place because we'd eat lunch there or, or get takeout <laughs> from there, and we all liked the food. And then at some point, we'd met at um, uh, one of the uh, 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 neighborhood town halls, and we'd, bumped in, we'd bump into each other here and there, national restaurant show, that kind of thing. And uh, uh, eventually I thought, well, we reach out and see if he might be interested in helping us get our food uh, program going, because we knew from customer feedback that we desperately needed a food program. And uh, so now we have one. That's great, man. Yeah, it's worked out well for us, too, because we were interested in, you know, we've been in the neighborhood for 35, 35 years now, um, and, you know, we were, we've been in the South Loop since it was just the South Side. You know, there was no South Loop. <laughs> <laughs> it was just South Side. Um, and so, we, you know, uh, I've been involved in the business uh, for the last 10, almost 10 years now, and we've been looking to diversify and try and, you know, grow our business and do something different, and, you know, it was a great pairing because I love beer, and uh, they needed food, and it worked out well, so... And this kind of separates you guys from the other breweries in, in the South Loop at this point. Now. You're the guys it it actually point. separates us from a lot of the breweries. Um, you oh, know, yeah, when, yeah. We, when we jumped on board, one of the first things we did was, you know, our quote-unquote market research, go to breweries and drink and eat, right? Uh, like it's the hardest job tough, ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, and so when we started going down and, and running through the list of all the breweries, it's like, well, there's actually not, there's a ton of breweries, obviously, in Chicago now, but there's not a lot of them that are doing food programs. Um, and so I think it sets us aside from... From not just the breweries in the South Loop, but from a lot of the breweries in Chicago in general, yeah, yeah. Of, of being able to provide a tailored program for you know that that the food designed 
to go with the beer and the beer designed to go with the food. Nice. So, so Nick, I saw you post a picture of what you were eating when you were there, but what Oh, what yeah. kind of what's the food like what are we that popped up on my twitter feed i'm like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's going on here what is <laughs> Where is that? yeah i was uh, i was ordering number 69 i got the oh. uh, we had to get it going with this mac and cheese waffle i was like what the hell is that about and then um, then we followed that up with the Reuben, the Saz Hop Reuben, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's where it's at. Yeah. So to be clear, you know, we we are making just about everything from scratch. You know, yeah. we we stuff our own sausage. Uh, our bratwurst is made with reduced uh, Chicago Pilsner. We cure our own uh, corned beef. Uh, and we cure it with Saz hops, the same hops that are used in the Pilsner. You know, so everywhere we can connect the beer to the food or the beer ingredients to the food. We've done that, and uh, obviously Chef Frank has been instrumental in, in helping us get all that together. Yeah, a, a true collaboration. That's what I like to see, man. Yeah. The food program is driven f for the beer, basically, you know? Um, and like you said, the so for the sausage, like we emulsify usually with water, typically, but we turn the beer into a syrup and use that instead. So there's like, there's hints and notes of the, of the beer in the sausage as well. So that's pretty cool, but also we kind of take a little bit of different stance on it. We try to do some Indian stuff, like Chef Luciano's, right? Our, our nachos, mm. they're pretty dope. And so everybody does nachos at their place, I feel like. It's pretty common, yeah. right? It's pretty common place. Ours is a little bit different. Instead of doing barbecue pork, we cook ours in like a barbecue coconut curry. And it actually pairs really well with beer cheese. And we make the beer cheese with Southside Pride. Exactly. So we, we interpret all the beer and all the food kind of the same way, and it's all geared towards making it work with whatever beer you're drinking with whatever food you're eating at the, at the place. I can dig it, man. Yeah, so this is probably great for the brewery and the neighborhood because when I was there, we were looking for food. We were, like, picking up beer to get on the boat, and we're like, oh, we need something to eat. And there's not a lot of things around there that you can, like, quickly grab something or just, like, even bring back to the brewery at that time when you guys didn't have the kitchen, right? Yeah, you know, we get a lot of requests, even from McCormick Place uh, attendees saying, hey, you know, we're going to come by and get two tables and, you know, have some beers and lunch. And um, we would say, well, we don't have food, but we have delivery options. They'll, they'll deliver to you. And that's not good enough when you're trying to get to your next conference, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the food options inside of McCormick Place get overwhelmed very quickly when there's a, a conference going on. And um, just in the neighborhood, you know, there's not a lot of places to have uh, sit-down lunch or dinner, you know. I mean, the nearest place would be sort of Kroll's all the way up on 18th, you know, so it, or, or maybe Reggie's. So it's, it's uh, um, uh, something the neighborhood really needs, you know. You hear from a lot of uh, uh, people who live in the South Loop, geez, I, I, I live in the middle of the city, but I walk out my door and there's nothing to do. Right. Well, <laughs> hello, yeah. welcome to Vaderbrow, right? <laughs> Here we are, man. yeah, 25,000 square feet. Yeah. Food and like, what, like 10, 11, 12 beers. So we have uh, 10 beers on tap, and then uh, usually things that aren't on tap, if we have some cans left over, we'll serve you cans. Yeah. And then um, it, it's a fun time over there, man, because, you know, uh, McCormick Place, they were telling me it's like four buildings, but it is the largest uh, convention center in North America. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. It'll soon be five, because <laughs> when the arena opens, it'll be connected. It'll, it's technically going to be connected. It's so really? it's going to be five buildings. Yeah. yeah. I wish they hadn't fucked up the, uh, the Star Wars Museum, though, man. That still kind of breaks my heart. I feel like they had something to do with that. Yeah. That would have been, yeah. that would have been killer, man. Uh, Justin, man, we've known you since the, um, for like five, six years now yeah. since we met in that strange park where they do the, uh, the Chicago beer society. This is the weird story. Oh, I didn't yeah. know. That's a strange the, park. Yeah. No, they do the, uh, what do you do in the strange park? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they, wear, they, yeah. Do this, uh, they do the Chicago beer society picnic in the same park on the northwest side of here. Yeah. And that's the first time Justin and I met, like, yeah. you know, a, a while back. Um, you guys are in Sox Park now. Yeah, yeah, that, so, was, that was a fun opportunity. What's that Great like? Now, how do you, what do you do <clears throat> to get into a ballpark? Do you, like, sit down and, like, piss these guys? Like, how does that work out? Yeah, um, so uh, one of my friends works in the ticketing office. It's all about who you know and connections, right? So um, my friend that's, that works in the ticketing office knows a gentleman that works in the marketing department who got us in touch with the sales guy, right? So um, the, the, the gentleman that's uh, the head of sales for the Sox for the White Sox, he actually lives in Lamont, Illinois. And um, this year after the whole um, ousting of uh, AB, or Miller Coors, oh, yeah, Miller um, they were kind of open to the idea of bringing in craft breweries, having uh, just more brands in general. 
they created the craft corner um, down in the uh, in the bullpen sports bar. God damn it, yeah, come on, buddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically, uh, Jason Lubovich, our uh, our director of sales, um, Jason and I talked about it, came up with kind of like a marketing plan to like sit down with these guys and do like a sampling. So we brought in uh, Southside Pride, we brought in our Pilsner, High Noon, we also brought in Red Velvet, and I believe we had a fifth beer with us. Um, but they loved all of them, and it was great. So I believe we're the only craft brewery in Illinois that actually has three beers in the whole stadium. So um, we're available, we're not on draft, but we're available on every level, yeah. uh, in cans, in the craft in, in the uh, craft corner, down the bullpen sports bar, and in the suites. So... Pretty cool, yeah. Well, Southside Pride is such a natural pairing for it, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that that makes, makes, that makes you a see lot a lot, yeah. lot of Instagram pictures of people holding their Southside Pride cans yeah. in the ballpark, which yeah. is very cool. Yeah. I got a little worried with the artwork. I was, I was hoping the Sox wouldn't get too pissed about it. But. Oh, because they kind of <laughs> share that guy. Yeah. yeah. They apparently love it. So. Yeah, they love it. They're just like, this is great. I was like, great. We can do this all the time. They should love it. <laughs> yeah, I actually so cleared great. that with our IP attorneys before, oh, good. <laughs> before going live. Okay, good. They said, yeah. so, are we going to get in trouble? And they said no. So. Yeah. Uh, Justin, so stepping back, like, what brought you to Bader Proud? Like, yeah. Was, like... Um, I, I was available last June, July. And uh, it was funny. Like, Rob called me. We, we talked about the story once in a while. Rob called me. I was... I was at the lakefront messing around, um, and uh, Rob called me on his cell phone, and he had like an earbud in the earpiece, and I couldn't hear a damn word he was saying. <laughs> and uh, it was just like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, and I was just like, I gotta go. So like, I think, <laughs> I think I just hung up on him, and I just did, went about my day, and everything was fine. And then, pretty much like a month and a half later, uh, Jason Lubavitch texted me. He's like, Hey, you want to meet up for a beer at Reggie's? Shout out to Reggie's on State Street. Um, so I was like, yeah, let's meet up for a beer. And uh, you know, my, my schedule was clear. I had nothing else going on. And uh, after four or five uh, founders, all day IPAs, um, Jason was like, you want to come to the brewery and talk to Rob? You know, we've got an interesting kind of position for you okay. if, you're, if, you're, if you're willing and able. So met up with Rob. Uh, we had a series of, of meetings with the team. And uh, it was a good opportunity, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, working working with Rob for Rob, it's a it's a good marriage for me. You know, like Rob's a good dude. Um, you know, creative. I, I pretty much have like creative control of what I do. Um, and Rob knows just like I'm I'm kind of like a top, like I'm out and yeah. I'm doing things. So um, yeah, it's good for me. So mm -hmm. professionally and, and personally. And you had a lot of those relationships that you've built prior that yeah. you, so you know people around town you know yeah. where to yeah all the where bars the, where the beer is going to work and yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool it's it's funny because we like you know we kind of looked at the the city especially the south loop and kind of mapped it out and you know rob and jason asked me like who are the, who are the accounts that you know and it was kind of shocking i knew everybody so, <laughs> 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 so uh so rob's just like you know take some beer go talk to him and you know see what we can do with tap handles and shelf space and, and whatnot so um you know i dip in there's many different aspects that I dip in, so it's pretty nice. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So you guys kind of building more of the the South Side kind of brand and awareness there with yeah. the kitchen and the Sox Park and everything like that's kind of like might as well make that your home base, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I felt like uh, I mean, I was introduced to the city by way of the South Side uh, coming to the University of Chicago, and uh, you know, I love the South Side, and I felt like there was no one owned it. You know what I mean? You can open it's, that. It's open it right up. there for the taking. Yeah. Trying to be kind. No, no, no. It's, no, no. Just, it's, a, just it's a beer pod. It's, it's a beer show. Man. Man. It's the buck in the box. I'm opening yeah. a can of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a hip hop beat box. Yeah, we should have. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I'd always wanted to try to, if it was possible, open a a, a place in the South Side, and we we had uh, come very close to closing on a place in Bridgeport, and it, it fell through with the eleventh hour. And uh, I'd opened up my search to sort of the city as a whole, but we just kept coming back to the South Side as it felt it felt right for us. Mm -hmm. And um, we wound up in the corner of Twenty Fifth and Wabash. But I think I think I feel like it's an opportunity to sort of be that. To be the, the 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 beer of the South Side, you know. Yeah, like an like an anchor. Yeah, like, like an anchor. Yeah, because it's like super accessible, all the beers. Yep. And then they're in cans, you know, which I'm a big fan of. What's up with Bridgeport, man? Because I think Five Rabbit has a similar story where they were like, "Hey, we're trying to open up, you know, in Pil near Pilsen, because Bridgeport is next to Pilsen." Yeah. And then for some reason it fell through. And then... So uh, I mean, I think there's a there's an element within Bridgeport yeah. that wants Bridgeport to be a uh, bedroom community and doesn't and and is very averse to sort of new uh, bars opening up. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're gonna have a tap, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a brewery, you ought to have a tap room with it to experience get the whole experience and to uh 
excuse me, make money that you, you know, to make money <laughs> to, to, you know, on a tap room. And, um, you know, they basically told us, you could build the brewery, but you can't have a tap room. And we said, well, really? forget that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and Jesus. some of these uh, aldermen and council members are worried it's going to bring in, like, riffraff, where it's like, the people that are coming to buy the beer they usually have money. They're not like they're yeah, not all like all crap, drunks. Yeah, all the crap beer riffraff. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think a lot. I think, I think, I think there's Nick's, something. Nick's hanging out. Of, Nick's good. hanging out in random true. parks. I would, so. I would <laughs> single out Alderman in that respect. All that I think there's 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 just a, there's some sense from some people that you know they don't understand the craft beer vibe. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, it's, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've been approached by a guy panhandling the street, man. Man, man you got a quarter? I gotta go get to the. I gotta go get some KBS, man. I gotta get some KBS, yeah. man. You need a quarter, man. It happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Just, just like that. Okay. That's funny. They let the duck in, like move, like move right into a residential area. Though that's that to me is odd. That they would oh, right, bar? Yeah. Yeah. Right, the duck in, like they're they're literally on the corner of a residential mm-hmm. spot, yeah. right there. Give me a lawnmower auger. Yeah, um, absolutely. Brought, brought to you by Beta Barrel Brinko. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, yeah. Rob, we um this week marks like five years, almost to the day where we ran um our first Beta Barrel story. Yeah. You know, and this was um this was like four days before the Tribune ran it. Right. But nowadays that'll never happen again because Tribune gets gets the lead on everything. That's kind of weird. Like, yeah. You're at a party and then halfway through the party, Tribune's like posting the preview. You're like, what, right. what the fuck? Right. I don't want right. someone beating them anymore. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, talk, walk us through a little bit of what's been going on in the last five years, man. Now you started with the good folks at Argus. Right? We started at Argus, and um, uh, they're great guys, but uh, we we just found that we weren't getting the volumes we needed, and and it was uh, uh, you know, they're a small brewery, and 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 uh, they just weren't equipped to to handle us, right? So um, uh, we moved it up to Stevens Point, and we brewed uh, really nothing but the Pilsner for uh, a year at Stevens Point, yeah. and then the first beer of our own we introduced was Oktoberfest, and uh, followed by Red Velvet, and then really it was Lawnmower. When that first came out, that started to put us on the map with uh, a lot of craft beer folks. You know, I mean, there was an article in the uh, Washington Post today about how pilsners are the new hottest beer in craft, right? <laughs> but when when we did this five years ago, people were like, "What are you doing, dude? Right? What on earth are you doing? Where's your IPA? Where's your IPA? <laughs> yeah." And uh, we came out with an IPL, and and Binnie's wrote up wrote us up at the Beer Buzz as being their favorite sessionable IPA in the market, even though it was an IPL. And it got us on the map. And uh, today, you know, uh, we still sell lawnmower, obviously, but you know, Pilsner uh, is is uh, still our flagship, uh, far and away our bestseller. And 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 frankly, Southside's coming up right up behind it. It's it's uh, kind of incredible how fast uh, that's growing. Now, what, now what is Southside? Again? Southside's a Munich style Hellas, okay. triple decocted. Yeah, that was uh, named by Beer Advocate. It was an outstanding rating by Beer Advocate. So uh, we, we s- sent them some samples, and they were uh, astounded by it. You know, so it's it's it, that's a beer that you know, from a technical st- brewing standpoint, is probably our most difficult beer to brew, and um, it's just great to make a a super flavorful. Uh, Hella style beer, right? And, mm-hmm. and it's just packed with flavor, and I, you know you can drink those all day. Yeah, for sure. And take photos with them too. And take photos <laughs> with them on Instagram, which we always encourage. <laughs> always encourage. Tag beer, bro. Keep it clean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, and so we uh, we opened up in uh, well, we started brewing in May of last year. We opened the tap room in June, and now our kitchen uh, in April. And uh, it's it's like we find every time it feels like a new launch, you know, <laughs> you're, you're yeah. doing it again, but it's it's uh, it feels like it's all come together, you know, like we've got a a great atmosphere, a great vibe there, you know, it's it's uh, you know you come in on a Saturday afternoon, people have their kids in there, it's it's uh, uh, but on on weekends we have uh, great events, we ha- hosted the Threadless C two E two after party, uh-huh. mm-hmm. which was a massive event. Um, and that was done during our kitchen soft opening, so we we, <laughs> we had you know <laughs> yeah, we got Rocky spanked. loved it, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, we had a great time. Got some sleep for like two weeks. <laughs> it was a great day. It was a great yeah, day. We enjoyed you know? the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and now Frank is on WGN making uh, mac and cheese waffles for the mac TV audience waffle, man. Oh, with man, mac and cheese on top. Pretty legit. It's legit as fuck. That sounds good. Which one of these was the first one you came up when you sat down? You had the beers. What, what 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 was the first thing you came up with? I think the first, Rob, you know, Rob and I had some initial meetings when we started the conversations about partnering together, and 
And he's like, he had some visions of, of what he wanted to see. And, and I think the obvious thing was the Bader Brat, right? We're a, we're a German, a, a modern German beer hall, so to ta- do a, a modern take on, um, you know, uh, a German classic beer hall item, <coughs> like Bratwurst, uh, was important to all of us. Um, you know, but we're not just opening up a thing and boiling a Johnsonville Brat, you know. We're, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think the kitchen space is so small, right? Like... That it was important. That it's, it's pretty laughable when you think about like the vastness of the entire building that we're given like yeah. a ten by fifteen room. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you walk into the beer cooler yeah. and it's like a penthouse, right? The, the, the beer cooler. We've got twenty five thousand square feet, but guys, you get our you kitchen get is a closet. Feet. Yeah. <laughs> and you get a panini press in an oven. But I, the thing was that like whatever we do, like we keep it small, but we do everything. We do it all. Yeah. So that was that was the biggest thing is that no matter what we do, we're, we're gonna do it. Yeah, so, I think I think that the the, the place where we started was, as Rocky said, the Bader Brat. Um, I had expressed an interest in curing our own corned beef, and that became our, our Reuben. Um, we knew we wanted to do pretzels of some sort. I talked about bringing them in, but Chef Frank uh, uh, was uh, had made pretzels in, in a restaurant setting before, and um, f- insisted that we do it the right way, which is to use lye uh, to to get the brown coating on it. Oh, yeah. uh, a lot of places we use butter or egg wash. We, right. we use lye in the very traditional German. Poison way. is the way to go. In moderation. In moderation. Just enough poison to get that pretzel color. Right? It's not just a song you hear at 2 a.m. at the club. Exactly. It's got some truth behind it. Those real short. <laughs> but it, it, it uh, and then, you know, we talked about doing a, uh, 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 a chicken sandwich where we utilize the hops to bring some hop flavor to it. And so our IPL chicken, what we do is we take the hops from Lawnmower Lager, the Falconer's Flight hops, we macerate them in, in uh, oil overnight and then remove the hops and the oil just has this amazing hop aroma. And we use that oil to make a mayonnaise that goes on the sandwich. And it's, it's just an amazing uh, chicken sandwich. You, you've never had one like it. And we use, that's the one carryover, the one true carryover from Chef Luciano's is yeah. we use our marinade, uh, our, our 35 year tested uh, chicken marinade on the, on the chicken thigh as well. So it's, it's you know, the beautiful, uh, deep flavors that we developed at Chef Luciano's, and we use that on the chicken, complemented by this really nice bitterness and acid that you get off the mayonnaise. It really, really works. Macerated, man. That's a great word. Look at this one. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's, that's a UFC education there. Yeah, I, yeah, I learned that at UFC. I, I got to ask him what that means later. So <laughs> Let's talk about Yeah, me too. <laughs> I should know what that word means. Yeah. Hey, Siri. <laughs> she is useless, man. I I ask ask her. She is man. lazier than fuck. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. She, she is depressing. Is she is depressing. <laughs> Ascertain means. No, I got better. Oh, see? Oh, see? Oh, oh, just oh, cutting oh, corners and shit. Oh, yeah, so, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Define macerate. Macerate means, especially with reference to food, soften or become softened by soaking in a liquid. Especially with reference to food, soften or become softened by soaking in a liquid. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's what, what we said. do there. Yeah. No, so the, the waffle is macerate actually, uh, uh, it's something I've been playing with for a couple of years. Um, I had this crazy idea to do a fried chicken sandwich, but instead of on like a biscuit or a bun, yeah. to actually put it between two pieces of mac and cheese waffle. Um, and I never quite got that to work, um, but we were sitting around one day and I'm like, hey guys, I got this idea that like I've been trying to do this mac and cheese waffle. What do you think about, does that have a place on the menu? And they're both just like, what the fuck are you <laughs> talking about? Bizarre, but yeah. this is like all the things that you like. Yeah, right? right. It's, like, it's, like, it, yeah. it's amazing because it's, it gets this gooey inside and this beautiful like crispy caramel outside. It's like all the aspects of like a great baked mac and cheese, but texturally mixed with a, with a waffle and like all the goodness that comes from that. And so... I mean, we did probably ran through a dozen recipes. We developed to... the fuck out of that recipe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, it was. I feel like there's like six different hands in this recipe because we like originally like it was like all right, let's make mac and cheese and let's turn it into a waffle. Then it was like then all I right, throw out the waffle maker and then... right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we literally right. started by just taking mac and cheese, and throwing it in the waffle yeah. iron, and seeing what happens. Yeah, you know? which is what you think it is when you read when you hear about yeah. it. Yeah, it's just like it's just mac and cheese, but it's but not if you do that, right. you make a mess at home. Don't do that. Yeah. I think uh, <laughs> it's, I think it's a Jonathan Serrata has done that. He likes to waffle a waffle lot of things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waffleize it. Yeah, you can waffleize it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> should we uh, should we talk about parties a little bit, man? I know you guys got um, Chicago Craft Beer Week is coming up. Yeah. yeah. And you guys have a big one uh, on on the uh, on the schedule. I think Beer in the Glass is first, and then right after that is the uh, Southside Craft Beer Festival. Yeah. So, yeah. Actually, actually, May nineteenth is our our next event. The next night. Oh, okay. Um, we're partnering up with a group called um, the Mud Queens. So we're gonna do a little like mud wrestling. Yeah, we're gonna do a little ladies mud wrestling in the brewery. Get the fuck out of here. Because we don't have enough shit to do. Yeah, um, yeah. We're gonna just turn the uh, the brewery floor into a mud wrestling pit and go to town. So outstanding. Yeah, it's great. Um, we make yeah, mud. Even if it's too. a charity, right? It's a, I mean, yeah. So all it's not all lasciviousness. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. <laughs> it's for a good cause. We've, we've, got, uh, for you. we've got three professional punk bands playing. Uh, <laughs> um, we've got, uh, the ladies are going to be wrestling, um, and, uh, all money is going to be donated to, I think, several, uh, women's charities. So. It's like um, battered women's, right? Or something yeah. Like but they're going to batter each other and then donate the money. They beat yeah. each other up and then yeah. donate money to a charity. Yeah. Oh, they, they've, been, yeah. they've been great to the planet. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, in all seriousness, it's helping. It's helping the community. So that's what it's all about. So, um, but we're happy to host that event. Hopefully we remove all the mud for the next day. Um. But then, yeah, May 20th is Chicago, or uh, Chicago, um, Southside Craft Beer Fest. Um, I think back in February, I was talking to a couple breweries on the South Side, and yeah. um, personally, I noticed that, you know, even for the past five, six years, that the South Side really doesn't get a lot of love or a lot of play yeah. in terms of just media coverage and, and, and talk in the streets. So, uh, you know, I, I talked to a few breweries, and I was like, we should probably get together and talk about, you know, marketing strategies with each other and working together on events and... Um, so I, I think my first couple of meetings was with uh, Moody Tongue and, and 350 and Hailstorm and, um, and then the South Loop breweries and everyone just decided we should just come together and start planning stuff, you know. So uh, along with, I'm also, I'm on the board of directors for the South Loop Business Exchange with Rocky. So that's how we met. Um, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, Please tear to my eye every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I remember the, the second time I met you, I'm like, who are you? You're like, yeah, nobody ever remembers me. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, we just talked about doing the event. I, I proposed it to the to the board members for the uh, nonprofit. And um, so SLB is pulling the liquor license, and um, the event is being um, produced by Bader Brow, uh, the Southside uh, Brewers Association. And, um, yeah. We're ready to go to town. So, so we what we're doing brewers. is we're blocking off mm -hmm. uh, Wabash, right? Oh, really? And so it's not just in the. It's not oh, just in the this is a huge deal. Oh, so, wow. so it's we like are blocking. Block we're yeah. it's a it's like a block party, right? We're blocking off Wabash, and you know Wabash ends at the expressway there, right? It doesn't cross the expressway. Yeah. You got to go over to State or Michigan to cross the expressway. So we're blocking off the whole block of Wabash. And your regular ticket gets you access to the outside fest at, uh, on Wabash, right, where all the breweries will be. And then on the brewery floor, if you buy the VIP ticket, that's where all the rare beers will be. And uh, uh, there's other stuff going on on the inside. So uh, that's on May 20th. Um, the VIP uh, starts at 1 p.m. The regular admission starts at 2 p.m. And you can get tickets on brown paper tickets. Mm -hmm. So we've got, yeah, 25 participating, bre participating breweries. Um, a couple of those breweries are from the West Loop. Uh, obviously, you know, I have uh, affiliation with Pete Crowley, so we included Haymarket. Um, one of the bands that are playing, uh, the gentleman that's the head brewer at Geno's, Kevin yeah. McMahon. So he, yeah, his band's called Crisp. Um, Kevin's in a band, too? He does a podcast, Dude, too. he's insane. He's, he's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. He yeah. is insane. He's the only guy busier than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a great guy. Um, and uh, we're going to have a band in the VIP area, and DJs uh, both inside and outside. Um, our sponsors, Sovereign. Out in uh, Plainfield. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Roth for that. Um, we also have Gluns, our distributor, sponsoring it as well. Uh, and uh, was that Food City News? Food, or Food Industry News. Food Industry News. Yeah. yeah. So they're helping us out as well to get the word out. Uh, yeah. So it's it's the inaugural. It's the first of its kind. First regional event put on by brewers for brewers for the general public. So <coughs> it's exciting. God bless you. It's cool, man. And if we're if we're gonna become like, and we are becoming that, this destination for craft beer, yeah. if we're gonna continue to be that. We need to explore, you know, mm -hmm. like not just like the Ravenswood Corridor yeah. or the West Loop. You know? <laughs> we need to really get out and kind of like see what's going on in these other neighborhoods because Chicago is a city of neighborhoods. Yeah, yeah we're doing you know, some cool shit on the south side. Man. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So this is exciting, man. So good shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're following up uh, that with Monday. We're doing a um, <clears throat> meet and greet with the brewmaster. Uh, uh, Frank is going to put together a four course uh, kind of a cocktail hour, uh, cocktail quote unquote with beer. Hour, so do some uh, special food for that and meet and greet available. 
uh, with the brewmaster and Rob avail uh, on the brewery floor as well uh, on Monday the 22nd. I'm not going to tell you what's on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> you have to come Fine. up and uh, be like that. Yeah. But I, I, I would guess there'd be something that came out of a waffle iron. There were. <laughs> something, 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 it's going to be here before you know it. Yeah. Yeah, no, you guys are planning it now. I mean, yeah, yeah, we're starting to start planning now. Yeah, it's like two plus Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's not even including May the 4th, where, or I think we're going to play Star Wars at the brewery. Yeah, we're doing um, Star Wars Day on Thursday. We're going to do uh, the trilogy uh, <laughs> starting at 1 o'clock. We're going to show the trilogy back to back to back, and we're going to cap it off with Rogue One at uh, 8 o'clock. Okay. Uh, we're going to do beer pairings for each movie. So what about that waffle? And we're gonna do a Death Star waffle special. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna sell you less waffles. I mean, Empire, Empire Strikes Back is <laughs> the one, but for me, the other one is the one where um, where's the one where he be where he, he cuts off Darth Vader's arm? This is young Obi Wan Kenobi, and he's like, we were supposed to be brothers. That one. Oh man, that tells you in my heart right there. I can't think of which <laughs> That was really? three. That was three. Episodes. I don't like any of the prequels. Really? I, I, three, I, was I think that three was good. Three was good. Well, we're doing the original I trilogy. Charger Binks and Baby Baby Anakin. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, we're going we're going back to the originals. The the, the three uh, the three, three the, the original trilogy. Yeah. 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 That's fun to see how Rogue Rest One ends yeah. right into uh, the originals. Yeah. Like, well, we're gonna cap it with Rogue One. We're gonna. Uh, we have we have a resident Star Wars expert on staff, uh, and I was Who's like, "What well, Nathan?" Nathan yeah. okay. I was like, "You know, we, uh, I, I was like, we should uh, we should lead off with Rogue One and show it in, in chronological." And he's like, "No, no, 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 that's so wrong." That's so wrong. <laughs> so Star Wars is personal shit. Man. Yeah, it's it so wrong. Serious we're gonna show Rogue One at the end. So we're gonna show Rogue One at the end because Star Wars geek said so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fair enough. More or less. Yeah. <laughs> Man, there's a there's a lot happening. You guys yeah, got man. yeah, always insane so amount bad. of beer and all these events. This is awesome. It's yeah, awesome. it's the classic example of build it and they will come, man. Bader Brow. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I remember you guys. We were talking to Lubo, and I remember you guys were on the other distributor, and he's like, "Man, we almost died fucking around with that other distributor, but we're back." <laughs> you know, like in a major way, man. You know, you got the brew, you got the brew club. You know, you got you got a different distributor. Things are things are roll. Yeah, I mean, it shows how how uh, you know decisions really? like that can really matter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm digging this uh, brother rice. Isn't that great? So if you come down to the brewery, so we have um, uh, the syrups that you, you know, in, in traditional, so let's back up a little bit. Because people yeah, don't know yeah. what a Berliner Weiss is. Berliner Weiss is a sour wheat beer. It clocks in at anywhere from 3 to 4%. Ours at 3.6, right in the middle. And, um, it, you know, traditional German-style beer from, from Berlin. And uh, 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 traditionally, it's served with uh, a splash of syrup, right? And in Germany, they'll use either um, raspberry syrup or Woodruff syrup. Woodruff is a German herb. It, 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 the syrup tastes kind of like marshmallows, if you ask me, right? And they're both good like that. But we bought a bunch of other syrups to mess around with. And uh, uh, my favorite, we get coconut, and mango, mm. and peach. If you mix the coconut and the mango together. That's the one I went with. Yeah, and that's really okay. good. We call that the Rob. Yeah, they, <laughs> that, 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 the, my staff is calling it the Rob. I don't know why. It still freaks me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does Rob taste sweet? I don't Do know. You, know you want the, yeah, I'm sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweet. Uh, but I think what we're, th we're talking about there is coming up with a, a menu. Here, <laughs> we're talking about coming up with a menu of like, you know, pre mixed, you know, mixes with come up with names for them, you know, to be funny. And then I got to ask like the, you guys did like a, a take on a Rattler. I forget what it was, but it was like a. It Veloso was, Rattler. Yeah. yeah. So is we use kumquat gonna, juice. Is that going to come back? You were saying so last we, time we it was have... hard to can because it was well, chunky. We, yeah. <laughs> it was not chunky. We've not canned it. We still have it on draft. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like a beer mosa. Yeah. Almost. It's basically yeah. a beer mosa. <laughs> it's, it's great because kumquat provides just the right balance of sweet, sour, and bitter. You know, within the fruit itself, right? The kumquat is is a, mm -hmm. it's a citrus great, it's fruit. It's a great rattler. It's really good. It's yeah. a great rattler, yeah. and and it, uh, the kumquat is a citrus fruit. It's like the size of a grape, and you eat the skin when you eat the the the, the fruit, and the skin provides a little bit of bitterness to it. It's it's just phenomenal. It pairs well with a waffle. Yeah, so Sunday. <laughs> yeah, so Sunday. sick with a waffle. Push in these waffles. All comes Sunday, back Sunday, to the waffle. Sunday half wall. price waffles and half price rattlers. Uh, Twelve to four p.m. in the tap room. So. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, my mom loved your Rattler. 
Oh, she did. She did. Yeah. That's awesome. That's she's great. like, I fucking love this. I was like, oh, God. Don't use the F word, son. This shit's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I met his mom. She uses the F word. <laughs> it's, it's her favorite word. It's really weird. Like, after she got done raising me, that was, uh, <laughs> that's what everything turned into. That was it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Chef life. Hashtag chef life. <laughs> <laughs> when your mom turns into a degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> All bets are off. Right? We're having a portion of the other program right now. Oh. Well, yeah, uh, that's all I have, Brad. Yeah, I think that that does it for this episode. Uh, so get tickets for the Southside uh, Craft Beer Fest, uh, May twentieth, mm-hmm. and then yeah, head over to the brewery, try the new food. I had to make it over there myself. So. Yeah, please come out. Yeah, and it kind of alternates as like this art gallery as well. There's so much space. We've got art there. shows going on out the wazoo. We've got um, uh, a local uh, playwright who's putting on a play on the brewery floor coming up. That's phenomenal stuff. Um, you know, just check out all our feeds and you know find out what we're up to. We've got a lot going on. Yeah, fantastic location. Uh, Bader Brow, Wabash, 2510. 2515. 2515 South. Right Wabash. on the corner of 25th and Wabash. And in fact, it's great. We put it, we write that on all our cans. Come visit us at the corner of 25th and Wabash. And um, uh, since we've been in Sox Park, we have people showing up saying, hey, I saw you on the can. You know, I, hey, that's not far, right? This, you know? this is working. This, this is working. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the best room. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. 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 If you've seen us on the flag. expressway, you've yeah. gone too far. Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> you guys turn around. <laughs> well, a pleasure as always, guys. This always. Was always. Yeah, this was great. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Yeah, Thank you. Man. Yeah, Nick, where can people find you? Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD. Chicago Beer Pass is on Twitter at Chicago Beer Pass. Website ChicagoBeerPass.com. All the episodes are posted there. And then our Facebook page, backslash Chicago Beer Pass. You're posting pictures of these sandwiches, these waffles, all kinds Dude, of stuff. Dude, the size there. Hob Ruben <laughs> is legit, you know. <laughs> We like, to, we like to eat, man. We're big guys. We like to eat. Hey, so, it, yeah. We should check that out. <laughs> uh, and we'll be back we'll see uh, you on the 20th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Southside Crab Beer yeah. Fest, May 20th. Let me know. And we'll be back uh, next week with another episode. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers guys. Thanks, Thank guys. you.